Are you looking for an Americana-filled cruise with everything from Mark Twain and lock transits to Abraham Lincoln and the very heartland of the United States? Well, a domestic river trip on American Queen Voyages, American Countess, could be for you. I'm your host, Jason Leppard, and this is Popular Cruising's review and deck-by-deck -deck tour of the 2020 Launched River Boat. Beginning low on Deck 1, before working our way up, is first the Grand Lobby. And for a river boat, it is very grand indeed. Stretching from a comfortable reception and seating area to a retail store, handsome bar, and side setup for great live music, under crystal chandeliers, and beside expansive floor-to-ceiling windows for observing the passing scenery. The venue is a perfect gathering space for socializing among new friends. If you haven't already done so, as we take a stroll down the impressive stairs at the end, we invite you to please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when our latest videos are posted. At the base of which is where American Countess's talented jazz combo often serenades guests in the evening sometimes even while passing by the concrete walls of an interesting lock outside. Otherwise, onboard entertainment is showcased mostly in the theater, with cozy chairs, tables to set drinks down on, and excellent sight lines to the stage, where the instrumentalists also play. and back up fun vocalists who playfully perform 1950s sock hop standards and more throughout a sailing. In fact, they pull double duty as the female singer was also the cruise director, and this fellow right here was the ship's resident River Lorian. And of course, under the disco ball, passengers are invited to dance their cares away, which many are often inclined to do. And then by day, the theater brightens up with equally expansive views opposite the Grand Lobby, when said River Lorian presents interesting lectures about the Mississippi and Ohio rivers, from the jazz music that would historically accompany writers, to the unique form of navigation that evolved from rudimentary, to the modern but also timeless paddle wheelers sailing for American Queen voyages as we speak. A spot-on Mark Twain impersonator also told stories of the river, while reflecting on his incredible life experiences and many notable exploits. The performance is truly not to be missed, and is certainly a highlight of any river journey. And not to worry, as the cigar is just a prop, and not lit to cause any unbearable fumes. Just outside the theater, and perfect for grabbing a drink to sip during said shows, is the Grand Lobby Bar. Here, many alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages are included in the fare, with two upper tiers of premium varieties, either nominally or market priced. Sailing through Kentucky, bourbon whiskey was undoubtedly a popular choice during our cruise, among plenty of other options to suit all tastes. And just behind it all, on deck one, is the grand dining room, for main included breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. A mix of self-serve and full-serve dishes are available in the morning and midday, and in the evening, everything is full service. Comfort foods for breakfast encompass the likes of traditional biscuits and gravy. And for lunch, items range from a hearty carving station to lighter salads and sides. And of course, sweet desserts. On the more gourmet side of things, an omelet of the day may feature gulf shrimp and crab meat or alternatively, a crispy fried chicken sandwich with spicy Nashville hot sauce might be on the menu. Every evening even features an available lobster course, like this creative corn dog variety. Caesar salads are always refreshing. And seafood here combines well with sausage for a regional take. Before finishing off with desserts, such as a classic Italian cannolo, singular as cannoli is plural. Farther down the way is the aforementioned gift shop. It's a small one, but does offer a good selection of logo items and clothing, as well as other souvenirs to buy and take home. And not to be forgotten is the purser and excursions desk for guest relations and assistance from the riverboat's very friendly and helpful crew. In the forward corners of the ship are first the fitness center, with a handful of various exercise equipment, 
and perks, another included spot for quickly getting snacks, coffees, and other drinks throughout the day. Besides pastries and juices, this is where a soft serve ice cream machine is showcased, complete with all kinds of tempting accompaniments. Once topped off, it's certainly not too difficult to overfill a cup. Then up on deck two, and even more tucked away, is the small spa. Really just an individual treatment room for massages and other body services. But it's quite inviting with its faux candles, and of course bed to lay down on. Larger by comparison, and again in the forward corners, is the ship's library on the port side. As with the bulk of the venues on board, it's a very warm and welcoming space, with a good selection of books naturally, as well as a faux fireplace, some windows to the outside, and inviting seating, even with the fun chessboard all set up and ready to go. On the other starboard side, meanwhile, is the card room, for more dedicated game space. In addition to puzzles for fun challenges among fellow passengers. And it was on this deck too that we had our deluxe outside stateroom with private veranda. Beds are quite comfortable, facing a television with bonus nooks. And the plush mattresses and nightstand storage get our teddy bear a thumbs up of approval. Especially great at each nightstand are multiple electrical plugs and USB charging ports. One side has that in addition to a clock radio that itself has another two USB charging ports built in. So there's no struggle to charge bedside, thankfully. Said shelves flanking the TV really are handy for storage, which extends some to a vanity desk with pull-out drawer, and even more charging plugs and ports, plus in-rim coffee maker, and a set of shelves above. Otherwise, in the closet, additional drawers are somewhat limited in number, with just enough hanging space above, but not as much as expected. The best part of this category are sizable bathrooms, with plenty of room around the toilet and sink basin, where more shelves are present for all kinds of toiletries. The lather bath products are very nice, and we appreciate the provided soap bar over body wash alone. The shower is particularly large, and certainly oversized compared to what one would anticipate on a riverboat. And rounding out the bathroom is a hairdryer hanging from several helpful hooks both on the wall and behind the door. There are even more on the wall outside the bathroom, which is always a pleasing inclusion. Beyond the room sofa is then a balcony that is completely private. Unlike those up a level, where a public promenade deck wraps in front. Suffice it to say, this well-furnished veranda is quite lovely with decidedly ample space. When you're ready to book your American Countess River Cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Travel who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get your complimentary quote, click on the link right here, or call the phone number or message the email address below. Also at the stern of Deck 2 is the River Grill, essentially a secondary dining venue to the main one downstairs, with its own bar for included and extra drinks. Also included is the food that is available from a quick service buffet lineup. that often repeats what is available from the main restaurant, but with some alternatives. We have to point out what was our absolute favorite here in the form of the best pecan pie I think I've ever had. Also available are tasty appetizers and entrees from room service. Should you desire something even more convenient in your own cabin. One thing to note though, back at the grill, is its proximity to the riverboat's paddle wheel it's a fascinating element to look at from behind glass, but when going full speed, it does a good job of soaking the alfresco terrace with a heavy mist that is best avoided while the vessel is underway. Drier by comparison are all venues outside and inside up on deck three. The chart room is another one in the corner, this time themed to navigation, with several interesting displays to peruse. And while there is no dedicated observation lounge, these corner rooms and even the seating nook across from the chart room can serve a similar purpose. 
But more likely than not, most passengers prefer the full wraparound walking track outdoors when the sun is out. In front of the pilot house are even welcoming rocking chairs. And definitely uninterrupted vistas while sailing up and down the waterway on the riverboat. The back of which is where you can gaze upon the classic paddle wheel away from any spray. Then all the way up on deck four, again high above the paddle wheel is the sun deck. A flat expanse of nondescript metal flooring with additional padded seating and shade structures as needed. But the very forward part behind the navigation bridge is off limits. Nonetheless, the forward decks, with their gangplanks stretching towards the next destination, are the most inviting. What well, with their rocking chairs and best views as the Countess approaches the many locks encountered along the river. It's always a fascinating process to watch, as the vessel narrowly fits inside concrete basins to be raised up or lower down, to gradually navigate the river at various dams. Seen here in time-lapse, the process is fully illustrated, before the doors open up again, and away we go. In preparation for the next port of call, as its tours are expertly described in the theater before arrival. As far as excursions go, as in Paducah, Kentucky, American Queen's signature hop-on, hop-off ones are great for being bundled into the cost of the cruise, and some even offer exclusive access, as at the National Quilt Museum, before opening to the public for the day, which makes for a colorful display for guests appreciating traditional woven fabrics and even non-traditional materials made to look like them. The bus then takes riders on through a time capsule's worth of Americana, such as at other museums illustrating the local history of train travel, with some miniature displays, and other more interesting full-scale ones, especially locomotives themselves. Towns along the river are quaint, and additional museums feature riverside life both ashore and on board. Classic calliope is included. And one thing that is always interesting is the architecture that seems to stand still in time. Oh, and as this is Kentucky, even the ice cream is infused with bourbon, and also bits of bacon in this delicious case, further flavored with sweet maple. Beautiful murals are in particular a mainstay art form in Paducah, as guests return to American Countess. Owensboro, on the other hand, shed light on some of the shortcomings of this itinerary, however, as most points of interest were closed either for being there on a Sunday or only in the morning before opening in the afternoon. Of course, it's interesting to just drive through such lovely little towns, but it would be even nicer to see the cruise line expand its offerings to what I would call bourbon and barbecue crawls that would be ideal to feature the local food and beverage culture. As it was, unfortunately, the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum was one such place we would have liked to have seen, but that was sadly closed while we were there. But thankfully, interest picks up by the time Brandenburg rolls around. As the access point for the Abraham Lincoln birthplace in La Rue County, Kentucky, where in the childhood home of the U.S. President, a museum is host to another outstanding look-alike and impersonator, who recites the historic Gettysburg Address, no less. The Lincoln Museum further expands on the great man's life across several tableaus, as even more quilts many other artifacts represent his legacy. 
The Abraham Lincoln Birthplace National Historical Park also beautifully commemorates his early life. Replicating in a memorial building the well-known log cabin he was so humbly born in. But it is probably just the simple but profound opportunity to visit the heartland of this great country that impresses the most. To conclude with our American Countess pros and cons, the things we disliked as pains in the aft are the limited amount of closet storage and staterooms, unfortunate paddle wheel spray at the stern when swiftly sailing, and the occasionally lackluster itinerary itself. But what we liked and can take a bow are the otherwise outstanding list of shoreside and onboard inclusions, great overall riverboat, and its tasty gourmet and comfort foods, and the super friendly and attentive staff. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos, watch our other ones, and visit popularcruising.com.